We're going to continue talking about some of the building blocks of question answering, and today we're going to talk about coreference. So first, what is coreference? So coreference is a phenomenon where you can have multiple noun phrases referring to the same real-world entity. And so let's say that you have a piece of text like the following. So Queen Elizabeth is mentioned by name, but you also refer to Queen Elizabeth with the pronoun her. Another entity that's mentioned here is King George VI. But the first time that he's mentioned, he's not mentioned by name. He's actually mentioned as the husband of Queen Elizabeth. Later he's mentioned as the king and his. And then sometimes you have entities that aren't mentioned by name at all. So a renowned speech therapist, uh, who knows who that is? It does refer to a real-world person, and if you had more knowledge about the situation you'd be able to figure out whom they're talking about here, but how do you know who that is? You need to link this to some real-world knowledge that you might have. So this is inherently a clustering task. You want to group all the mentions together, and some of them co-refer to the same thing. That task is co-reference. This is a hard task. There are many reasons why it's hard. So, for example, there might be multiple matches for a given entity. So if you have a string referring to President Clinton, does that refer to Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton? Uh, if you're reading a piece of text from 2002, uh, that's probably referring to Bill Clinton. If you're reading a piece of text in 2016, you're probably reading about Hillary Clinton. And that ties into things like uh, grammatical issues, so you need to have number and gender agreement with pronouns. If you're referring to the Department of Justice, is that referring to a man, a woman, or multiple people? So you need to know whether you could use he, they, or she, or it with that reference. There are also syntactic constraints. If you have the sentence, John helped himself, himself will always refer to John. But if you have the sentence, John helped him, to blah blah blah, then him can never refer to John. And then there's a lot of world knowledge that comes into play. If you mention a flying beast, you're more likely talking about a dragon than a flying squirrel. And not all of the sources of knowledge to get this sort of information are really compatible with the co-reference task. But let's say that you did have a perfect co-reference system. The applications seem really obvious. So for example, let's say that you have a piece of text like so. Uh, Mozart was one of the first classical composers. He was born in Salzburg, Austria yada yada, and if you had the question, where was Mozart born, you could figure out that, aha, Mozart was born in Salzburg, Austria, and you wouldn't get confused or tripped up by pieces of text like the bottom one below. Haydn was a contemporary and friend of Mozart, he was born in yada yada, and so even though Mozart is closer to he there, a smart co-reference system could figure out that that's not actually talking about Mozart, that's talking about Haydn. And so that is the challenge of co-reference systems, actually figuring out which strings refer to which entities. Let's start with an algorithm to solve the co-reference problem. This is called Hobbes algorithm, and it assumes that you have trees that represent the syntactic structure of the sentence. These syntactic structures have clauses, and each clause can be a noun phrase or a verb phrase, and that basically encodes what is the main word of that clause of the sentence. And so what the algorithm says to do is you first find the pronoun that's referring to some entity, and then you search for each sentence or noun phrase. You go left to right, breadth first, and you see if it agrees in number and gender with the pronoun, and you keep doing that until you find it. This is a really stupid algorithm, but it works relatively well. So let's say that you have the sentence, Lynn's mom is a gardener, Craig likes her, you want to solve the reference for her, 
So you go back, is there an entity in S2 that could be? So Craig is a candidate, but doesn't match in gender. So then you go to the previous sentence, S1, and then you search left to right, and the first matching one is NP1, and so that corresponds to Lynn's mom, and so then you would take that as your reference, because that does match number and gender. So as effective as Hobbes algorithm is as a baseline, we can do better, a little bit at least, using machine learning. And the typical machine learning pipeline for co-reference typically breaks down into three stages. You have pre-processing, mention detection, and co-reference. Pre-processing includes things like extracting the parse trees that we saw before. Mention detection corresponds to named entity recognition that we talked about before. And then co-reference is trying to match up pronouns to possible entities. One thing to pay attention is what researchers use in co-reference papers for their mentioned detections. Are they using a real system that you could deploy in the real world, or gold mentions that you get, say, from a human? And if you report on gold mentions, you typically get a much better co-reference accuracy because named entity recognition is not perfect. And you can have very small errors in named entity recognition turn into really big errors once you do the task of co-reference. So now let's talk about the actual task of doing machine learning for co-reference. So the first thing that you can do is you can try to do pairwise co-reference. And so for every pronoun and for every entity, you have a binary classification. Is this referring to this entity or not? And you can include features like, are the mentions similar? grammatical constraints. There are also semantic constraints like, is this referring to an organization or the right nationality? And then there are also positional constraints. Pronoun references typically don't go over really long spans. So the problem with this is that you often have triangles and you might solve the pronoun references locally in a way that's consistent that are globally inconsistent. So you could say that Jing likes him, but she, and if you have him being co-referent to both Jing and she, that's a problem. The state-of-the-art co-reference systems that are out there are more complicated. You can have clustering algorithms. There are also large complicated pipelines that do multiple sieves of increasingly higher recall, lower precision algorithms, trying to get the easy stuff right first, and then moving on to the harder stuff once the easier stuff has been done. And many of these pipeline approaches are largely rule-based and only do machine learning for the downstream hard stuff. And so in these cases, it's kind of hard to evaluate. So this has been a whirlwind introduction to the kinds of tools that feed into question answering systems. Now we're going to shift gears a little bit and actually talk about the task of question answering. What are the data sets that are out there that we can use to see whether we have a good question answering system or not?